big moment in history for Intel, receiving eight and a half billion dollars in fresh funding from the government. Let's get right to Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger. Pat, good to see you. Uh, I, I understand this is a very big moment for your company and for you as a leader. This funding, what will it allow you to do? Well, overall, as you think about this, uh, we've been working on this rebuilding of the American supply chains and semiconductor. Uh, the challenge has been that you know we just weren't economic to build manufacturing in the U.S. There's been 30 years of industrial policy in Asia, and we've seen the entire industry drift to Asia as a result. So our supply chains became precarious, and we saw that through COVID in a very acute way for the entire industry and economy. And what this funding is about is rebalancing so that we can be competitive with our manufacturing investments uh, in the U.S. And that's what the CHIPS Act was all about, right? And yesterday was the day where it all came together. So it was so exciting to be in Arizona with the president, with Secretary Raimondo, these big grants coming forward and eight and a half billion of uh, immediate grants, uh, 11 billion of loan capacity and about 25% of 100 billion investments. So 25 plus billion of investment tax credit as well. And putting that all together, that's $45 billion committed to the industrial policy of rebuilding the supply chains of the U.S. So we're quite excited about that. A super big day and it will allow us to not only get our technology leadership back, but to be able to combine that with at scale manufacturing right here in the USA. Pat, these are these are really large numbers. Now, you and I have talked in the past and I think you've been maybe a little hesitant to say Intel's back. But when I see numbers and hear numbers like this and the plants you're building in this country, it sure sounds like Intel's back. Well, thank you, uh, Sazi. And, you know, I mean, obviously, we got to get the technology back. And we had just had our foundry day a couple of weeks ago where uh, this five nodes in four years getting back to technology leadership coming together. We also have to get our product machine executing as well, where we're delivering the best products on that technology. And finally, you have to have the capacity. And this is really the third of those legs. And I just say it is coming together to say we're finished. Oh, I think that's very presumptive to say that, hey, this engine is coming back to life. There's a lot of evidence that that's the case. And I'm really excited about uh, yesterday's event just to put a huge exclamation point on that with the president, their commitment, their partnership, and obviously to the entire industry. Hey, we want to be your manufacturer at scale. And, you know, one of the lines I used yesterday, uh, Asazi, is uh, Ohio. That is the AI foundry of the industry. Let's fill it, build it with the greatest AI chips, ours as well as the industry's. You know, this is a powerful moment for the nation. Pat, uh, this is a, it's still a, it's a powerful moment for, for Intel. You know, does it change? You know, when the government says we're going to back Intel in a very big way, does it change your sense of purpose, your sense of responsibility? I, this is a big rubber stamp of approval. Well, I view it in both directions in that sense. And uh, when I talk to Secretary Raimondo, she constantly reminds me, Pat, we're counting on you. We are betting on Intel for this. And then I immediately respond and say, Secretary Raimondo, you now have a sales quota for me. <laughs> we have to work together, right, to bring the customers and to reshore the supply chains of the nation. So it's a huge statement of affirmation, of uh, partnership and investment, uh, but it also is, I think, a moment for the nation to sort of say, hmm, we have leading products, we have leading technology, and we're building uh, capacity. Yes, indeed, it is a time to build more resilient, sustainable, and trusted supply chains for the digital future of the nation that is being supercharged by the AI era that we're in. Now it's time to make these moves. And uh, this is a moment that I think really will be defining in that uh, transitioning of the supply chains of the nation, as well as for Intel. You know, we're doing what we said we would. And when we launched this effort you know, three years ago, people said, no way are they pulling it off. Well, the evidence is building, they're pulling it off. No way will we have this level of industrial policy supported by the nation. We're making that happen and we're building these factories at scale. This is good for the economy, good for the national security. We're excited. Really stunning stat I came across, uh, Pat, and this is from JP Morgan. They point out that East Asia manufactures 75% of the world's chips. 
Now, as someone who has spent really their whole career in this industry, number one, why has this happened? And then two, how hard is it going to be to get market share back from those East Asia suppliers? And, you know, when you look at those uh, statistics, it's, you know, frightening. We invented uh, this, and the president made that point very uh, clearly in you know, his comments yesterday. We invented semiconductors and transistors and everything that we're talking about. But 30 plus years of malaise in the U.S. and industrial policy through the Asian countries has led this industry's manufacturing to move entirely to Asia. And that's a frightening statistic given how everything is going digital and we need semiconductors to support that digital revolution. And as we look at uh, the policies that have been put in place, a lot of this is, hey, are we gonna measure a five-year investment on a 90-day shot clock? No way! You have to have policies that are encouraging long-term significant capital investments. That's what the East Asian counterparts did. We need policies that are driving 10, 20, 30 year R&D cycles. That's what our East Asian counterparts have been doing. And by the way, that's what gave us this industry. You know, as coming out of World War II, all of DARPA and the industrial policy investments that were made created the semiconductor revolution. Time for us to get it back. And that's why I say, you know, the capital policies, you know, the long-term tax policies, the R&D incentives that we need for long-term research, you know, and the creation of the talent pools taken together. Yes, I believe this is a defining point to rebuild this industry for the future. And I'm super happy that I and Intel have been play, able to play a part in that transformation. Pat, I'm just going to assume your company is taking market share over the next decade because of these factories you're opening up. But even still, there is going to be a component of chips being made in Asia. As we push into AI, I mean, to use your word, frightening, is it frightening that some of these chips will still be made in another country, given the boom we are seeing in AI and given how fast it's moving? Yeah, and our objective is not that 100% of these chips move back to the U.S. Our objective is balanced, resilient supply chains. And if we get to my moonshot goal of 50% in US and Europe in a decade, you know, that is such a phenomenal outcome, given that we're almost at 0% of the most leading edge chips today. And at that point, you get to say, oh, we really have rebalanced the supply chain uh, for the world. And you know, to us, you know, I expect that we will need a chips too. Uh, in the process uh, as well, Sazi. You know, 30 years of bad policy does not get corrected in one three-year uh, act like the CHIPS Act. We'll need more sustainable policies to go forward. But I do believe that shift has begun. Our factories and others are starting to be built here in the U.S. Technologies are being uh, researched. We have now engagement with every major AI chip activity in our packaging and foundry. So, you know, this is a great uh, moment, I think, to see those swing back in the right uh, direction. But the world to me is one where balanced, resilient supply chains is the answer for the future. And uh, we believe this is a moment that begins that progression. As someone that's been out pounding the pavement uh, in DC and with various lawmakers the past two and a half, three years, Pat, what, what would a CHIPS Act II even look like? You know, to me, it's gonna have some characteristics like CHIPS I, uh, but it needs to focus more on supply chain. You know, we need to bring the rest of the supply chain, the chemical suppliers and systems components, you know, back to the U.S. It also needs to be more long-term research uh, as well. We need to make sure that we're building the seed corn for two, three decades uh, into the future. You know, we'll have to have components of workforce uh, as we uh, enable this. There will need to be sustained uh, capital and tax policies that encourage long-term capital investments that we would you know, have for uh, the future. But the best way that we can make sure CHIPS 2 happen is to make sure CHIPS 1 is highly successful. And I think yesterday was a beginning point for that. But if we're going to go back to Congress and others and say, here's the long-term policies we need to put in place, you know, we need to make this successful. And my hope, Sazi, would be you know, that at that point, you know, after it chips too, that the sustainability of the ecosystem, that we've rebalanced the cost, that we started to see that ecosystem emerge, because fundamentally this has to be commercially sustainable uh, for the long term. And I'd hope after, you know, 10 years or so of explicit industrial policy, we would see 
you know, that positive spiral emerging that allows us to rebuild this industry that we lost over three decades of inaction and a decade or so of explicit and long-term policies, I think we have the chance to get it back. 15, 20 years from now, hopefully uh, you and I are on a beach somewhere, Pat. I mean, <laughs> I, it has to happen at some point. We can't keep going at this pace. Pat Gelsinger, <laughs> always nice to see you. Thanks for making time for us. I, I know it's been a very uh, busy 48 hours, to say the very least. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Lassie. Bye-bye.